Can I get my wife to go see E.T., I wonder? I'll go see Texas Chainsaw Massacre tonight to E.T. tomorrow. That'll be the, uh, exactly, that'll be the, the yin and the yang. Fantastic. If I could be a plumber, my father would be really, really happy. Like, really happy. He always tells me, you need to get a trade, you need to be an electrician, you need to be a plumber. And I'm like, I don't know how to do that. And I don't have the passion to do that. Some people do. But it's a, it's a, it's a, you know, you, you want to tell stories and you want that power. You want to, you know, there's something so incredible about, about the scope of a movie. You know, it's like, I, I don't make movies to watch on someone's iPhone, God forbid. You know, I make movies to be shown in a, in a theater. And that's, that's what makes it special. Um, and it's one of the few art forms that you can do that. I mean, you can make a giant painting, but then only one exists. You make a movie, you make a bunch of copies, you can travel the world and you can, affect all these different people and inspire them to do things um, that it's incredible. When you see a great movie, what's better than that? And that's what, that's what Joe Dorowski, another thing that he taught me, he says that the worst thing in the world is for people to go to see a movie and to sit down in the chair for two hours and when the movie's over, they get up and they leave and they're the same. That's the worst thing, he says. He says, you know, movies have the power to change people. You know, that you go in there and you, you sit and you watch a movie and you come out and you're transformed. You've had an experience and you're never the same. And sometimes it's a small change, sometimes it's a huge change which changes your entire life. But every film has the power to do that. So to not aim for that um, is a waste. You know, why bother? Uh, I thought that this was an important story to tell. You know, I've, I've always been a fan of, of Jodorowsky. I've always been a fan of his films, you know, El Topo and Holy Mountain. Um, and when I learned that there was a lost movie that he made, you know, one that he worked on for a bunch of years, but never was completed. It's, it's a movie that we can't see. If you ask him, he made it. But we can't see it anymore. It doesn't, it doesn't exist in the way that we know a movie to exist. It's about ambition and it's about trying to do something. And even if everyone says you're crazy, um, you need to go all the way. You know, you need to try to do the best that you can. And if you, and it, it's like he says in the film, he says, if you fail, it's not important. You know, you have to try. And that's really kind of what the whole film became about. It's like, this process of creativity, this process of trying to create, you know, for whatever that means for, for any of us. You know, he, he feels that he made the film. When he talks about the book, he says, we did it, here it is, it's complete. Even in the movie, he says that when he speaks about how they were doing the storyboards, he says, every day, you know, we would come in and we were shooting, he says. He doesn't say every day we were drawing, he says, every day we were shooting. Nine o'clock, we would start shooting all day long because in his mind, he's done the work. He's created the movie. The first thing he said is, I need to have a team. I need to have my spiritual warriors, he calls them. He had to find the best people for all the jobs because he knew that he couldn't do it himself. Um, he knew that he had the ability to inspire these people and he knew that he had the ability to give these people um, the abilities to, to create, the, you know, to have freedom and to create wonderful new things. And that's what he did. Um, once I knew that that existed, I knew we had to share that with the world. I knew we had to speak to Alejandro and, and get him to tell us all about it, because I was curious. We needed him to tell the story, um, and we didn't really know the story. You know, we knew little bits of it, but during the interviews is really when we learned everything. Um, and, and that's really kind of what it was, and it, it became, I think it became um, something bigger and something more important you know it's not just oh it would have been great had he made dune in 1976 and time is different now i mean this is now 2014 you know we're talking 40 years ago he started making dune 40 years ago it was another world you know it was it was a pre-star wars world now science fiction dune has been told david lynch did his version there was a, a television version in the u.s i mean it's been it's been told before. 
and Dali is gone, Orson Welles is gone, Pink Floyd hates each other. I mean, you know, these things are, you know, I don't know if it's possible to do it the same way that he wanted to. To me, Jodorowsky is, is the person who's really, who's the most accomplished in every single artistic field that he, um, that he does. And that was, I mean, I certainly learned that during the making of this film, because I came, I'm one of those people. I came knowing the movies. That's it. I was like, what's the Incal? What's, what's Psychomagic? What, what, what are tarot cards? And he kind of showed me all of these things. Um, and without him, without Alejandro giving me this gift of this story, because he could have easily said no, or, or, hey, good idea, kid. I'm going to go make it with somebody else, or he's going to make it himself, or whatever. Um, you know, for him to trust me with the story, somebody that he didn't know, you know, now we know each other, but then I was a guy off the street. I was a crazy person coming into his apartment asking for him to give me this, this amazing thing. Um, so my life has changed, you know, completely, for sure. Definitely has that power.